Today, I'm gonna to be covering with you how to lose belly fat forever. And this is something I'm incredibly passionate about as an online coach. I've helped over 4,000 people transform one-on-one -on -one, and I have over like 30 million YouTube views now, which is awesome, so thank you for that. And today, I'm gonna to give you the advice you need, not just to lose the belly fat, but to keep it off for good. So first and foremost, fat loss most often isn't the issue. If you're watching this, studies have shown it's easy to lose weight, it's hard to keep it off. It's hard to keep it off consistently. And as someone who's been doing this for 10 plus years, I've maintained abs, I know what it takes. And in this video, I really wanna break down where you should be focusing your efforts. I'm not gonna be spending as much time on how to remove body fat and remove belly fat in particular. If you're looking to do that, I have a video conveniently linked, first link down below, kind of talk about what I would do if I was starting with high body fat, how I would get down there, and I also have a free fat loss guide below that that will actually walk you step by step on how to lose that belly fat but let's not waste any more time and let's jump into this video. So the theme of this video is gonna be improving your relationship with food. If you're looking to lose fat or you have lost fat, you understand how much it is nutrition. The adage that abs are made in the kitchen is absolutely true and it holds so much importance. Training most often is the easy part, it's gonna complement your physique, but if we're wanting to lose belly fat, we need to be in a caloric deficit and most often this is gonna be achieved by way of improving our relationship with food. Because even if we do a ton of cardio and we're out running a marathon every single day, a lot of people have the tendency to train hard but eat it all back and they end up in this vicious cycle where they end up burning those cows and refueling themselves. Instead, by changing some of these dietary habits and jumping into these tips, it's real easy to not only lose the fat but to keep it off. So the first and biggest one, similar to what I said before, is you're not a dog. Stop rewarding yourself with treats. If you want to enjoy a treat or something fun, there's no issue with doing that. We're going to cover that shortly later in the video. But you're not a dog. Stop rewarding yourself with treats. It's really easy to say, oh, I've had a really stressful day. I'm going to go get this massive sundae or I'm just going to indulge in a whole pizza. And we'll have this very weak-minded, short-ended mindset of I've had pain or struggle, so I want quick gratitude by just eating something. The problem with this is you end up eating it, you feel good for about 10 minutes, then you feel spilt over, you feel sweaty, you got a lot of sodium, you get a headache, and then the next day you say, what did I do? Or maybe after that event, you say, my diet's ruined for the day, I'm gonna continue on in this attitude. Just the same, all too often, people reward themselves after a great Monday to Friday, they'll jump into the weekend, and they'll say, I need to let loose. And they're in this cycle where weight comes down, fat starts to lose, and the weekend they just binge out. And you end up at this vicious cycle where you're up, down, up, down, up, down. And it can be incredibly frustrating. And our goal here is to actually take off this fat and keep it off. And I'm someone who likes pizza. I'm someone who enjoys ice cream. I love a good pasta. And I'm able to enjoy all these things and keep my abs because I've changed this relationship with food. And it's not comfortable to do because it will go against perhaps what you've been grown up with, what you're used to, the natural tendencies and habits you've had. But if you want to get somewhere you've never been, you got to do something you've never done. And for me, a big part of that was snacking. If you're watching this, you may struggle with this as well. And I saw from Andrew Huberman, one thing he said was he said he had always felt that snacking was something more for children. And when he said that, it kind of clicked for me. And instead of focusing on just needing a snack all the time, always needing to eat something, always having a drink handy, instead say, I don't mind these gaps between my meals. I'm gonna eat when I'm hungry. I'm gonna listen to hunger signaling. I'm actually gonna have a more mature mindset towards this. And this made dieting for me way easier because if you're eating all throughout the day, the calories can really, really add up. Whereas if you're taking breaks, you're being intentional, you're eating good quality meals with great food, it's very easy to stay on top of this. And just the same, break those patterns. If you know you shoot yourself in the foot every single night in that danger time after 8 p.m., you sit down, you watch TV, you go searching around, you open the fridge, you're like, what's in there? You're looking in the cupboards, you're trying to find a way to kind of just get something delicious in there. And then if you have food in your house, that's a whole nother problem. But by breaking that habit of like that mindless snacking at night, you can save so many calories. You can consider how you could easily have 500 to 1,000 calories and you can do that multiple times a night. These days will really pull you back from your goals because being in a deficit of 500 to 1,000 calories is gonna be incredibly uncomfortable. And that's where we need this balance. This is my next and biggest tip is the 80-20 rule. This changed everything for me and I know this will for you as well. So the 80-20 rule is to aim to have 80% of your foods to be really high quality, amazing, healthy foods. 20% to be really fun. They don't need to be quality, they don't need to be anything. This allows you to have balance. And what I mean by this, if you have a really healthy lunch, you have like a really nice bowl and it's just full of vegetables and chicken, and then after your friend wants to go out for a scoop of ice cream, your goal is for 80% of your daily food to be healthy, 
20% to be a little bit more fun, but you can have that ice cream, you can fit it within your calories and you can still be in a deficit because you are indeed having really high quality foods. And for me, this helped a lot because I really aimed to have like a healthy breakfast, do a healthy lunch, the odd time I wanna have something fun, that's no problem. I can have some dark chocolate if I want it guilt-free. And removing that guilt and that mindset of like all or nothing from food is incredibly freeing and it makes it a lot easier to stay lean. Because when you remove that, you remove these boundaries and shackles on yourself where some foods are good, some foods are demonized. And here we're aiming to have like a really good source of whole quality, healthy foods. And then we have some that of course are just something we enjoy. Now, are we gonna be exactly 80-20? Perhaps not, but this is something you can evaluate in your food and depending on how you're tracking it, it's a good thing to reflect back on and to aim to improve. I've really gotten to the point where I like eating healthy at this point, so I'd say more 90-10 because it empowers me. I wanna feel my body with the best. I wanna perform my best in the gym. I want the most for longevity. I want great digestion. And once you start to change that mindset towards, I just wanna eat something quick that tastes good for a few seconds, to what is actually gonna be the best for me, it changes everything. And within that, improve your food quality. Start seeing food as an investment. Start buying the best foods you physically can for your body. And I'm not saying you need to go to Whole Foods and buy overpriced food. I'm just saying make good decisions. I have no problem opting for extra chicken, even if it's extra four or five dollars. I know that can sting, but the way I see it is it's gonna fill me up, it's gonna prevent me from getting some garbage later and eating a meal. I think like a Big Mac combo is over 10 bucks now anyways. It's crazy the prices out there. So by me actually getting this better food, I feel better. I always am happy to spend the money at, for a salad at a restaurant before I start my meal. Uh, you wanna stay away from Caesar, of course, because it's a little more cal caloric, unless you have the calories for it. But by me preemptively doing this, I'm filling myself up more. A huge salad is gonna sate you a lot more, especially with a lot of protein, than some quick junky foods will, or breads, things like that. And once again, it's not like one is better than the other, but just this attitude of I'm gonna put the best food in my body, because you can be very full and be in a deficit if you improve the quality of your food. You could be starving and in a surplus if you have a really low quality of food. So by changing this and trying to invest in those good foods, lean toward that 80% and makes it a lot easier to stay lean, take off that belly fat and keep it off. Then my final tip for you about changing your relationship with food is to stop eating your feelings. I remember one night distinctly, I was driving home, I wasn't feeling good, I was feeling a little bit run down. I think we like just had a really bad night at a sports team I played on and I was like, this sucks. And I'm like, I just wanna go get some food, I just wanna eat something. And by doing this, it's not good. It's not gonna solve the problem. Like I said, it's gonna leave you feeling worse, you're gonna feel remorseful, you're gonna be like, why did I do this? You're gonna compromise on your values of what you're capable of. It's just gonna put you in a bad spot. So instead, when you feel down, stop reaching for food. Instead, call a friend, go on a walk, do something you enjoy, like read a book, watch favorite show, whatever it is. Like I like watching Office, it always makes me feel warm and good. Like do something that actually will make you feel better that isn't a detriment to you. It's just the same if like every time you feel bad, you start drinking, become an alcoholic. You can become a foodaholic if you really are always eating your emotions. And this will promote more of that binge eating behavior and attitude. So working against this and using these tips, I know this seems like I pulled away from the topic of fat loss towards your stomach, but I'm telling you, like I've kept abs, I've kept a six pack for like the last eight years or whatever it's been, and it's because of this, and I've continued to work towards this. You can't expect yourself to undo all of your bad habits and completely rewrite who you are overnight, but this is something you should actively be working towards and something that we can work towards together. I'm an online coach, I do this one-on-one, -on -one. like I said, I have 4,000 transformations, and I fully guarantee my transformations. So when you sign up with me, it's your results, your money back, and I can guarantee your results because I've built systems to help individuals just like you with these exact problems and to really do that hard work to give you the instructions you need and to work within your specific circumstance to ensure you get success. So if you wanna learn more about what I do as a coach, it's in the link down below. Make sure to check that out. Uh, you can check that out, no obligation. I'd love for you to apply because I'd love to help you transform your life. But thank you for tuning in today. This video is really dear to me because I feel like I struggled getting a good flow with this at the start of my journey. I'm really happy to help you out today as well. So thank you for tuning in. If I helped you smash like, drop a comment down below with what your favorite tip is. It always means a lot to me and I love getting a discussion. Down in the comments, I check them all so it really does mean a lot. Have a fantastic day. Peace out.